Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Have a great show with Chris Frangiola. First, I just want to do a little hot topic for you. Um, Jada Pinkett's book is out. Lots of books coming out. We get into more of them in the show. Anyway, her book is coming out about her life. And she says, this is the juicy stuff that I've read about it so far, is she says they were separated and have been for seven years. So they were separated for six years when the incident happened at the um, Academy Awards. And she thought it was part of a skit when he got up there and slapped Chris Rock until he came back and she could tell his mood and she was like, are you okay? And then it continued. So um, I thought that was really interesting. Um, we know that she had an entanglement with her older sons. I believe it was Trey, who she calls her bonus son, who is 30 now with his friend, August. So we know about that whole story. Um, but she also gets into how she really st suffered with mental illness and depression and even ending her life. And w at one point, Jaden had a friend over, her son, and Jaden said, well, my friend's uncle took ayahuasca and it really helped him with his depression. So she went, did it. And it's a lot of, I mean, a big part of the people article people magazine about the book was that that is what cured her that is that this drug that you take with like a shaman i don't know some special person does it and you take it and it's um you have hallucinations and i don't know if you have to keep taking it i don't plan on ever taking it but apparently she's like this has really worked for me and it's worked for a lot of people so that's kind of um interesting so that's the scoop on her book also, you guys, I have this cute shirt on. This is from the new Juicy Scoop line of merch. Everything is at heathermcdonald.net. You'll see the juicyscoopshop.com uh, link right there if you want to go directly there and buy it. Also, I have a real juicy Patreon coming out this Friday in which I have a follow-up to the rat or rats that crashed my show in San Francisco. Yes, there is more to the story, but so much more Juicy Scoop to discuss. But now let's not waste any more time. Let's get your favorite in here, Chris Frangiola. Hi, Juicy Scoopers. Thanks for watching me on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the channel and please hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my episodes and juicy, funny videos that I post here. Thank you. He is back in the seat. Welcome back to Thank the Juicy you Scoop very much. Show. Happy to be back. It's been a while. Good to see you again. Yes, I mean, last I see we you. saw each other was on yeah. the road in our San Francisco trip, which was right. was pretty fun. Sacramento, San Francisco is great. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to just talk about The Golden Bachelor because we talked about it on the live show, but you and yeah. I have not talked about it on this regular show that's free to all the people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you heard you were wrong about the in, in memoriam. I know. I know. That I know. it was for one of the contestants' yes, dear friend. friends. I understand that, but I was, you know, <laughs> I was doing jokes. I like... I know people are writing me. I'm like, you don't understand when you fact check the jokes. It's, I know. Uh, it's I gonna know. be. It's, it's long, fine. It's like Hassan Minaj but, when they fact check his jokes. Oh, by the way, Hassan Minaj, who is from The Daily Show and had his own show, right? And he's kind of in the. Is he being canceled? I feel like people are torn. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're torn. Um, I read because a... because they they're like well most comedians do kind of uh, uh, embellish their stories but then then they're like well he's completely making up stories and they're yes. kind of dangerous stories a little bit like you know, terrorism came after my daughter and then so then they're like well that's a little different right I guess the stories were like real exper experiences of racism right that he has had um, in his life and then you know told the stories yeah and in one of them. It involved like asking a girl to prom right. or something, and whatever the story he told that was not 
did not put her in a her good light. Her parents said you can't go with him to the prom because he's too brown skinned or something. That's what his story was on stage. And the girl said this never happened. Like uh, we never. It's all. It's all a fake story. Well, I heard from some Patreon person, right, who went to the class reunion or something and actually talked to the actual girl. Yeah. And at first she didn't want to talk about it, but it actually caused her a lot of problems like everything in today's world in that people find her. Right. And that's dox what, her and everything. Yeah. And that's where it was like wrong because everything you tell now, even if you tr don't say their name, somehow they can find you. Uh -huh. She was a cheerleader, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Right. And so I think that's where he got in trouble. It wasn't just saying... You know, um, we went to Disneyland and it rained that day and my kid shit its pants. Okay, right. well, I went to the, your Instagram and it was a sunny day the day that your daughter shit right. her pants right. five years ago. And how dare you put that in your mm -hmm. special today, Chris Frangella? It's not exactly that. And how dare you say that the in memoriam on the bachelor, the golden bachelor was? I I understand it was, it was still, a live show. It, it doesn't was, matter. It was still that somebody was. Listen, had I died. hadn't even really watched it, so if it yeah. wasn't for you, I have now started watching. The the Bachelor. I'm caught up as well. Okay, mm -hmm. so also people said I think the people at Jimmy Kimmel are listening to your show because Tuesday morning mm -hmm. I had um, Sarah here and was it Tuesday? Whatever the show was, um, I had Sarah. Oh, it was th last Thursday I had Sarah here. We recorded it Wednesday, Thursday night. He put out a show, and I said your joke and I gave you credit. I said Chris Frangella said, "Will the Fantasy Suite have one of those bathtubs that have an opening door?" Walk and we laughed hard and everything. And I guess that was in his monologue. Right. And, you know, two things can be true at the same time. <laughs> right, right. Could there have been a writer that was driving their car listening to Juicy Scoop? Yeah, it's a pretty popular show. Mm -hmm. And throw that out there along with everything else. Also, you were going to say, in your yeah. in your humble opinion. Right. It's a joke that anyone could have made. Yeah, I'm not going to hang my hat on that as my... Yeah. I, but you were the first person I heard. Sure. So, well, thank you. Also, mm -hmm. I got in a little heat, the way the fans want to make everyone hate each other that's in our business. Right. So I recorded my show for for Tuesday, and I was talking about um, Kyle from Beverly Hills dating Morgan Wade, who is a country singer. Uh -huh. And she went and picked her up from the airport, and they were both wearing ripped jeans, and she had a trucker hat, and she has long black hair, and she looked very much... Like um, Mike Myers' character in Wayne's World. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have thought that except I saw someone saying, found it in another group, saw it other places, and someone made a meme of the Wayne's World characters next to she and Morgan. And yeah. it was uncanny. And I said on the show, I don't know whose joke this is. It's not mine, but it's so funny. Right. So then I tried to find the picture. I couldn't. I made my own. And I said, this is not my joke. Whoever came up with it, congrats, so funny. People started writing me, oh, it's Ryan Bailey, okay, who has a great podcast, so bad it's uh, Yeah, good. I know, Ryan. And I go, oh, cool, you know. Yeah. So then I go back to my other post that's on the grid, and I go, oh, at it was Ryan Bailey who came up with this originally. Then someone writes me and is like, it's – it's going crazy. You better you better take it down or you better like talk to Ryan right now. I'm like, holy fuck. So then I like text Ryan and I go, hey. And he goes, oh my God, it's it's insane what I'm getting. People just being like, Over burn this. her at the stake. She's a joke stealer. And I like, I literally said it in the show. It wasn't my joke. Get, tagged him. Right. I'm like, and my Ryan's like God. a friend of yours. And Ryan's like, mine. I yeah. love that you think it's funny. Don't right. even worry about it. Like, what? Yeah. I go, well, I took it down because I'm about to, people are coming to my house with a pitchfork. <laughs> and once again, it's a joke that, I mean, look, the Wayne and Garth. Yeah, but reference. It, it I hadn't thought good. of it, but when yeah. I saw it, and then people picked it up too and didn't give him credit. And that's just part of it. It just happens, you yeah. know? Anyway. Doesn't anybody have anything to do anymore? I Get mean, it. God. <laughs> like, why are you like, we, a Even lot the of Hassan us, Minaj thing, I'm like, all not, right, maybe, but who cares? Like, 99% of us that do all this respect each other, like each other, want to be friends. Right. Yeah. Share the knowledge, mm -hmm. follow each other. Yeah. Like, it's really not. <laughs> and then, like, even if there are, like, uh, they, they call it, uh, you know, like, we have similar thoughts in, in comedy. Yeah, like yeah, those yeah. Jokes. You're like, who cares? It's a one-off joke. It's not like I'm going to be doing this joke for the next 12 years. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah. But that's why it is kind of interesting about jokes, and that's why when I was uh, originally still uh, ch uh, told I stole some jokes at the improv, the Star mm -hmm. 69 bit, that is what got me to then start going, well, I have a pretty weird fucking family. 
Yeah. And nobody's going to have the story about my brother, you know, being arrested for stalking because he said hi to someone in the kitchenware department where he's a security guard and they got the wrong idea. Yeah. Thing, you know, and like I said that once and someone's like, that's so funny. That's the kind of stuff you should write. So that's why it is important to write about your personal life. But then when you step into a place in today's world, I think you kind of have to be pretty careful. Absolutely. If you're saying it's a true story, I yeah. think you have to be pretty accurate about it. Yeah. I think he, I, mean, I think he, he is got a bit of shit on him right he, now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think he was actually the, probably the lead candidate to take over the daily show as, uh, and I don't think he is anymore. I got some inside scoop. He's not. Because no, I know. I yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's it's everywhere that he's kind of out on that. But I sure remember who, remember the guy that said that started going around on podcast interviews before everyone had a podcast and everyone would say, I want to hear your really amazing story about how you were there at 9-11. Yeah. Steve uh, ran easy. And yeah. And then they found out he wasn't. Mm hmm. And then he had to come forward and be like, hey, it was one of those things. Yeah. And then who was the um, the newscaster that exaggerated some other war story? And his daughter was Matthews. The... Uh, yeah. And um, his daughter and his daughter yeah, was, was the actress girls. in Girls. Yeah. And then peop every talk show he'd went on, What's someone would say, tell us about how you were in the fighter jet yeah. doing the story. And someone did the fact check, and it was like, no. And it was one of those stories that just get exaggerated, gets out right, of it. Right. But we know some comedians, too, that we worked with that would all of a sudden, we would tell just a life story or something in the room, and then that that would become their life story on stage. <laughs> and you're yeah. like, okay. Mm -hmm. Right, so, right. So, mm -hmm. you know what? What's good mm -hmm. is if you are a funny, creative person, it, your your career is not just based on one bit, right? Yeah, and might, you might have to sit in some shit for a minute, but I'm I'm guaranteeing he will come back just like people that have done a lot worse, Hassan like a Louis. Minaj. Yes, yeah. just like a Louis C.K. I whatever, know. just like um, they all yeah, come. Everybody comes back. There, yeah, there was the other comedian who um, what did his special, and he, he kind of ripped on a girl that was also a comedian that only had one arm. Ari Shafir. I love that we're just bringing up everybody's yeah. name. <laughs> well, I mean, actually, they, these guys are all great comedians. And they're and, all doing fine. Yeah, and they're all doing And like great. Eliza, like, yeah. called him out. Right. And yeah, so these mm -hmm. people do recover. Yeah. That's why you need to have some savings. Right. Maybe um, another place to stay for <laughs> six months. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't go get your Starbucks at the coffee yeah. bean on Sunset. Yeah. Maybe like if you have like a second home or your parents have a little lake house, just go away. Take that break. Sometimes when I walk down the sometimes beach you, in Malibu. Sometimes you want to get canceled. <laughs> oh, please. I'm begging for it. Like I would love it. Yeah. I well, mean, cancel what? I mean, I do a podcast out of my garage. Like, come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what were you saying? You were walking in I, Malibu? Like, sometimes I walk down the, the, the beach in Malibu, and I swear there's this house that is that house. I see people in there. It's this gorgeous $25 million house, and usually the blinds are completely drawn. But sometimes they're up a little bit. And there's and more than one person? Several people in different rooms, but they're all bandaged up. I think it's a place for- Plastic surgery. To recover recovery. from plastic surgery. Yeah. And now I think it's become like- Go take a break. <laughs> like Mel Gibson, go to this house for two weeks and just look at the water. Turn for in a your while. phone. Yeah, right, right. Turn you in know? your phone. Yeah. They should, that should be a place now. They should have a whole city for. Brandon just came back from his religious retreat, which is oh, yeah? something I did for three days, and, and they have to give up their phone. And when I first said, and you'll be giving up your phone, your iPod, pod, they don't even want them doing school work right. for three days. And at first he's like, you're joking, right? But then he really was looking forward to it. And the kids came back. It's amazing. Um, but they had all the phones and all I could and it was during the emergency right. alert system. And I'm like, I hope they told the kids to put it to turn it off. Yeah. Like to completely turn them off. Cause I'm like, I can't imagine at the school just like the bag of phones just like going off well, during did, that time. A lot of people got called out during that when it went off. Amish, a lot of Amish oh, that's, are not I supposed saw to have that. phones. And they they got busted by, by it. And, and then prisoners. Having, there was a lot of prisoners who were not supposed to have phones, and that went uh, off, and they got busted. A lot of people that had burner phones that yeah. are cheaters. Mm -hmm. Right. They found out there was. <laughs> yeah. So it was. Uh... Um, getting back to this guy. So I watched it, and I wanted to just talk about a few things. One is I was so upset with the producers because they put him in this old convertible car for him to take this girl out to this old 50s diner. Mm -hmm. And 
not only is he driving in the dark in a in an old fashioned convertible, which they don't put up the top, right? And their hair her hair is blowing after her friend did it for her. This other contestant because they're all nice yeah. to each other, and he's like, "Oh, I'm I'm sorry, I can't. You know, my lights don't work. Why the fuck didn't the producers go pull over? Right? Pull over. Get off. This isn't safe. I mean, first of all, it's not safe for anybody to drive without mm-hmm. their lights. But now you have a 72 year old who's not used to driving a 1950s car, blind. and it's a yeah. first date. Mm-hmm. No, I know. I think they're kind of <laughs> like, screwing with him a little bit because they just had them all. The last episode, they yeah. had, you know, now all the the girls who are left get to go to the whatever they stay over in this right. apartment. And in the apartment, they have bunk beds. I'm like, what yeah. are you doing? Every one of them is over 70 now. I think anyone No, no, left, no. There's, I, su- there's some in their 60s. There's this one I, girl. Still left? Yes. Okay. There's this one girl who has a very good facelift. Yeah. She's a widow. He got on the bunk bed with her. Oh. She's only about Top 60. Bunk? Yeah. And just to talk to her. Yeah. And she's only about 60. And she's a widow. And I think she's from Newport Beach. I don't know how booming the personality is, but I have a prediction. Okay. Who's ever left, hopefully they'll say keep her around for a while. Right. Because I think the only way we're going to do the Golden Bachelorette Mm -hmm. is a girl who's 60 and fit and looks pretty young. And then the men are like 40 to like... 40 to like 63, but they're all, maybe they didn't set the world on fire. Maybe they're not super rich. They're the older versions of what we get in the real bachelor. So they're of personal trainers. They are realtors. They are, you know, um, whatever mechanics raise their kids, but maybe they're hot. Maybe they're tattooed mechanic, whatever, but they're hot and they're a little younger. Okay. That is the only way we're going to do the bachelor because we're we're not going to get some seventy five year old woman and then a bunch of eighty year old men. So it's going to be a, one of the youngest ones, right? That goes far, and then the men will be gold and silver haired, like they'll have some gray in their hair because he's clearly dying his hair. Oh, by well, the way, and look at that tanning on but, his face. But um, that's what that's my prediction. We were driving down Ventura Boulevard yeah. yesterday, and there's a big billboard of this Golden Bachelor, pretty much that picture. And yeah. my daughter goes, look, it's Daddy. Shut up. Yeah. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. My daughter thinks it's thinks it's me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, the guy's a good-looking guy for 71. I'll take it if I still look like Dad at 71. But I do see the resemblance from far away, moving down Ventura. I had a, you know. Well, um, I'm I'm on a documentary right now that's out. Okay. And um, we'll get to it. Caitlin's the star of it. And I'm thinking, uh, and I'm on it too. Okay. And we do look alike. We have the exact same hairstyle. We're tall. It's very similar. And I'm like, I thank God we shot it here and not like in a living room setting. And because I think you could think that who's talking? I'm Except so gl- my voice is different I'm so than glad hers. you said that because... <laughs> oh, I'm the first to admit all the people that people say I look like, and it's never Cindy Crawford, okay? No, but just now <laughs> we were talking before we went to air about the topics we were going to do, and yeah. you were showing me some Caitlyn pictures, and I was about to say, I mean... Let's get it's, to it's it. It's stunning. But no, I want to oh, say yes. something so, before we get... Yes, please, finish The Bachelor. I think now yeah. the next one, if there is a next one, yeah, they should... Have you seen... I know you guys have talked about it, The Naked Show... Yes, the Naked Attraction. Naked Attraction. On Mix Netflix. the two. Mix Golden Bachelor Naked Attraction. So you just see old, pri- you know, old dicks, old, I mean, <laughs> the tits and the, and the vagina in the same shot. You know, you can't. You can't I mean, that, that is just. <laughs> Why not? Have you seen, you watched it, right? Uh, I course, watched yeah. the first episode. I made Sarah do it. I think she's filing a lawsuit. Yeah. That I made her watch it. I watched a little bit last night. You know what? I, I my takeaway was nobody nobody has a great a dick. I wanted to barf and never see another. Yeah, I was like, I do, like I've never been that person that was pretending like I couldn't wait to get at it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like I, the dick. First of all, there are times <clears throat> in my life where you know I'm not happy with my husband. Right. That show, and also this one, The Golden Bachelor. Right. The, how sad everybody is once their husband dies. I'm like, mm-hmm. you're I, good. You're I'm thinking. lucky I have, like, yeah. I, you think it would be the opposite? I don't want to be on The Golden Bachelor as a widow, and I don't want to be um, as a single person on the... Uh, so I think dating shows, depending you're not in an abusive relationship and it's maybe just in a lull, right. watch these shows yeah, and have a better appreciation for, you know. Yeah. 
Oh, I know. It does. That, it like, is... at least you have someone to have dinner with and you, and you chuckle with or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or someone that can clean the gutters. I don't know. Right. Whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I But like I said, I think in the live shows, I, this is season one of this. Right. So they, I think they had a pick of the best of the best of people in their late 60s, early yeah. 70s. They got the best they could get. If they do another season, I don't think they're going to be that there, great. The one girl that he went to the diner with, she's 70, and she was, like, dancing with him in a sundress. And, I mean, the texture of her skin was ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know what – and, like, a lot of people can pull back their face. But when right. you see, like, great arms that are not, like, you know, crepey, uh-huh. I'm like, what does that girl do? That woman should get a deal with some brand – and say what her regime is or something like I think yeah. they could be older influencers. I think they there's some that are gonna pop from this a little bit. And there's some that are gonna find each other and they're gonna go have lunches and go to Europe together on right. a trip and right. have a good time and be like, I'm totally fine that you got the golden bachelor. Mm-hmm. And for lunch they'll have a cottage cheese and a, me- a half a melon. <laughs> half a melon cottage cheese. Oh, and a, and a hard boiled egg and a uh, grapefruit. A gra- a gra- you know, like a meat patty, hamburger patty, but no bun. It's just on the plate. Yeah. Wasn't that like the diet plate? You the, got di- the diet. And then every we, diner. We looked it up and it, it was this is um, also with that meal is a, a bottle of one of white wine a day. They oh, recommend yeah. Chablis. Oh, sh- I guess Chablis, Chablis is enough. less calories. These are mm-hmm. diets that were printed in the 70s. Yeah. Like Vogue My mom magazine. was always half a grapefruit, only black coffee mm-hmm. and hard boiled eggs. When she needed to get like thin for something, right? That was it. I mean, obviously it worked because there was nobody really fat back then. If you look at pictures, well, those are three. Those are actually three whole foods. They're not bars. They're not protein shakes. Yeah, they're just a hard boiled egg, the acidic of the grapefruit, and then the black chop coffee to just like clean you out. Like in the original Bad News Bears, there's a guy Ogilvy. He's supposed to be the heavy kid on the team, and they make a lot of jokes about how yeah. fat he And then you watch it now, <laughs> he's like 130 pounds. It's like, wait, he's not like, fat at all. It's like Delta Burke. Yeah, They made I know. such a big deal about her being heavy. Yeah. I'm like... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Um, so, okay, we'll keep watching. Now, the, this 104-year-old woman, she went skydiving. She used to skydive a lot. She wanted to do it one more time and break the record, and I guess she did. And you had an update? <laughs> yeah, she died last night. I just of natural the, causes, not yeah. from doing the skydive. No, not from the – well, who knows? You know, maybe – but no, she she died, I guess. She, but that's a perfect way to end it, you know? They yeah, should, so she – She should just dug the grave and let her die right in. <laughs> Just okay, bury her up. Oh my god. Well, she I mean she's doing it tandem, which really I've done it. It doesn't really take any skill. It no. just takes you willing yeah. to do it. And um she broke the previous record in 2022 by a 103-year-old Swedish woman. So she's like this is my one last thing. And she's calm and confident and when I did it when I was like 23 years old cuz I was part of like a real estate package uh-huh. you know like a tony robbins you can do it and i went i was so hung over and when i did it and then they give you the video and it's so unflattering because right. there's a guy filming you and your wind is like blowing your face yeah and i'm just looking at hers like i was 23 but i looked that ugly doing yeah. it it is the most unflattering right. video you could ever ask for is what you look like jumping out of the plane yeah also i don't think anyone should be jumping out of planes so well, I, I, I just, mean, some people love it. You know, it's I never know. been my, I have no desire to do. And I can't it, believe I put my mother through that. And I pray to God my sons don't ever make me. Wait, you're, oh, you, you. Yeah, were, like yeah. she was like, please call me after, please call me after. I was like, oh God, you're so annoying. Yeah. I mean, the amount of money my mom had invested in me at 23 mm-hmm. years old for me just to go jump in this thing <laughs> and, do, and go. I mean, not a lot of people die. It seems pretty safe. My uncle died. Oh, forget what I said. No, a couple, like <laughs> literally like five months later. Really? And he was like a professional. And this lady died. So. He was a professional. Like he did it himself. And it was just a windy day. Yeah. And I'm like, not my uncle. He was a cousin that kind of acted like an uncle. Right. But um, anyway, don't, I don't think it's a wise idea. Okay. This woman, she's a Long Island school bus driver and she was caught drinking on the job. She didn't know that the white claw was alcoholic. I believe her. I saw her. I watched her uh, interview. Yeah, I believe and I re- her. I believe her. And because honestly, you can be fooled. Like, what would? She, how would she know? It's not. She thought it was like a drink. It looks like a drink. There it's was... in the same. Like, if you go into Seven Eleven, they're kind of like next to the sodas and stuff. I remember in my like twenties or whatever, 
I was just loving life because I'm like, this is the ultimate diet treat. Right. And my friend was over and I'm like, I have been loving, I don't know why I did this sooner, but I've been drinking these diet Dr. Peppers and I just love them so much. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, the diet Dr. Pepper that is in my fridge. Like, I'm telling you, I have one. It's so delicious. Cra- takes away my cravings. And she's like, that is not diet. They looked exactly the same. Whoa. I literally was like, ah! Like, I threw the can. I, like, ran to the toilet, tried to be a bulimic. I was like, what the fuck? I've had, I literally had, had, like, 18 of the 24. Yeah. So, and there's there are so many of these mocktail and then alcoholic drinks and they all look like they could just be yeah. like, I, there was like something in my fridge that was like a, a fizzy or something. Right. I don't know if somebody sent it to us or whatever, but I was like, I wanted just something other than water, but not alcohol. And I was like, oh, let me get my readers. Does this even have alcohol in it? Like, I don't even know. Well, Celsius. So, I thought Celsius was one of these white claws, but it's not. I guess it's just the one that- It's like a healthy red yeah, claw, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. Um, anyway, she's going anyway, to- They forgave her, right? They forgave her, but they, I don't know if they gave her her job back. They didn't arrest her. But she did get fired from I, her job. I kind of feel like you shouldn't be driving kids. She looks what, a little when, older. She's a bu- yeah. Oh, she's a school bus driver. Like, uh, I think let's let's evaluate everything. Going okay. On. Let's all right. check the Alzheimer's. Yeah. Let's check. And she's the also going through eyesight. chemotherapy. Okay. Yeah. So she's um, got a lot going on. Okay. This was kind of understand why she needed a white claw <laughs> in the middle of the day. But that's gonna if this if now every g- drunk girl coming from a party every eighteen year old is gonna use that excuse you know right. getting out of the car I, I didn't even know I thought it was soda <laughs> who knows a uh, white uh, uh Brooke Burke who used to be the host of Dancing with the Stars said I think you know this she's said in some interview she said i thought derek huff was so young and green and safe brooke said on an episode of her podcast i had no idea he'd be such a powerful badass choreographer had i not been married i would have actually hoped we would have had a love affair you are intertwined with someone's body when you're a dancer there is no way that i have ever been so connected besides with a lover or a husband than derek oh i guess originally she was a contestant that she yes. became the host and he was her partner. Right. I, yeah. Which is what I said. So many people start boning with mm-hmm. these dancers. Why that one girl, she's been engaged like five times. Yeah. Who's that other girl? Uh, I forgot her name. Cheryl Burke. Cheryl Burke, yeah. She's been engaged so many times and like three of them were her partners. I don't know. Yeah. I can't even keep up. But um, Mauricio and his partner, Mauricio from um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, he is having so much fun with doing, um, you know, TikToks and selfies Mm -hmm. with his partner. Yeah. And they laugh. Oh, do they laugh? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I think something's going on. Oh, really? Because last show, he was at a dinner with his mother and his dad and this other woman who's an actress, and she was sitting next to him with her arm around him. So everyone was like, oh, my God, this is a former actress. She's now a realtor, like most of us have to do, except I went the opposite sure. direction. Um, she's on his show, Buying Beverly Hills, which is like a selling sunset coming out. And so people thought, you know, that they were dating. But it's been cleared up that, no, the girl is dating his dad. His parents are divorced but friendly. Oh, Okay. So my original thought that he might get together with his partner, even if it doesn't last forever, I still think it might happen. They're just very, very connected. Good. Well, I mean, yeah. They kind of like, he needs this, right? I mean, who knows? I don't know who he is. Oh, but... my God. He, his career is booming because of this. Because of Dancing with Stars. Yes, and I he's know. got all the agencies everywhere. Yeah. But I mean, real helps. estate is it taking a dip. People. And then he's got the Buying Beverly Hills. Yeah. And they, they really want people to watch that because it's the second season. And I don't think it really was that big of a hit. Greg Brady is on this season. Barry Williams. And he's is he a, still around. Yes, of course. No, but he no, is. but I mean, he hasn't on, gotten the book. Bu- not boot. that I know of. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I think he got a very good score last time he, he danced. He's a very good dancer. I mean, the guy's been in the business a long time. I just right. can't believe it took him this long to get Barry Williams on Dancing with the Stars. I feel like he's I feel like Barry, season one. I feel like Barry Williams is one of those people that for the last like 40 years has done those shows like with like he sings a few songs. Yeah. You know, from the Brady Bunch, and then mm-hmm. like you could have a meet and greet, and right. he has survived, which is what a lot of housewives are trying to do. Right yeah, now. he he did it successfully. He had a thing in Branson, Missouri, called the Brady Brunch. <laughs> the 
it's real. Where you went and watched, it was a brunch, you know, whatever, noon yeah. to two. And he told told Brady Bunch stories and you sat and ate eggs and home fries. I mean, it sounds like an amazing morning. Listen, that is where I think a lot of housewives will continue on doing. Yeah, right. And Shannon Bedore of Real Housewives of OC um, has been arrested and got a DUI. No one was hurt. Yeah. Um, and so people were like, what now? Like, is she, because she's doing this show, she did them at the, she's doing up the improvs with Tamara and Vicky called the Trace Amigas, uh -huh. where they, it's all about doing shots of tequila and drinking and doing shots. And even her, um, oh, like on stage? That's yeah. What, really? She, and now, and even her opening line to the season, I mean, nothing is aging well, is now I take the shots. They're just shots of tequila. That is oh. her tagline this season. Right. So anyway, um, she announced, I am going to some type of outpatient. Yeah. Not an inpatient. An outpatient therapy that involves, you know, alcohol dependency. And she will continue with the Trace Amigas oh, good. thing, but won't drink or do shots yeah. during the show. Uh, yeah. And a so lot of people, be, a lot be... of comments were like, we don't think this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Put it to rest. But and then other people are like, girl, you got to make your bag. You got to pay for the, you know, for your mm -hmm. life. Just get somebody to drive her home. Well, yeah. But well, well, yeah, but you shouldn't be drinking on the show. Get that bus and, driver from Smithtown to drive her home. Yeah. So anyway, that's a little update with that. But, uh, but you know what? Talking about outpatient and stuff. Um, I mean, everyone's like, no, you should be in. I don't think there's any right way to get no. it together if after you. It, once you realize Maybe you're not an alcoholic, but you have issues with alcohol. Right. Like, I think whatever works. Like, uh -huh. if someone can just come to your house and, I don't know. Is that what it is? Is that outpatient? Or you yeah, I think go... outpatient can be that you, like, sometimes it's that you go all day. Like, you're like, a, it's like a right. camp. And you go from, like, nine to six and you have therapy and group and all that. Yeah. But you go back to your own home mm -hmm. and, you know, you can have your phone at night and you can do things. Right. And all. But then the whole point of being an inpatient is that... There's no way you detox. But then yeah. people say the problem with inpatient is that once you get out, then the elements of the alcohol being at someone's house or at a bar are there for you to grab. So maybe it is better that you do it outpatient. Right. And have the challenges right in front of you. Yeah. Right, right, right. For you to resist. I don't okay. know. So there's a little update there. Okay. Brittany <clears throat> is, um, her book comes out October 24th. Can't wait. Cannot wait. And she posted this latest one, which is very sexual. She had a G-string purple um, negligee on. Yeah. And Amy from Juicy Scoop Obsessed pointed out that she noticed there was a Christmas tree. So is this an old video, which is very possible, uh -huh. that she just is recycling? Or does she already have her tree up? And uh, some of the Juicy Scoopers are like, I'm ready to put up my tree tomorrow. Most people, it used to be in our day. Mm-hmm. You would never put it up before Thanksgiving. No, never. And even right after Thanksgiving is a little too soon. Right. Okay. Then it was, now it's never before Halloween. Mm-hmm. I know. So I think before Halloween is a little weird. But there's also, I don't know, a new thing now. There's all different trees. There's like a Halloween tree. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So there's so much be, decoration. Who knows? That could be, who knows what kind of tree that could be. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of decorations going on. I feel like everything has gone just completely. So I have my um, my house in La Quinta. Okay. And I said, Peter, I want, I think I do want the tree because we're hosting Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like the tree done because that's probably like the only time we're going to have like the relatives right. come. And rather than buy a bunch of like pumpkin stuff, yeah, let's just have like a beautifully lit tree. And just have that be like our one decoration for the house. And I don't know if he's going to go for it. But because I'm starting from scratch there, he right. wants to bring me other stuff from our house. I'm like, no. I want to just get a pre-lit tree. And then I want to be that lady that only has the decorations that match the decor of the house. So all the shit your kids made. That stays at Woodland Hills. Yeah. Right, That's the, the painted, family traditional red the, gold tree. The painted macaroni the, cards. The, the thing that the hand mm -hmm. that, that is like way too big. So the one arm is like the one yeah. tree arm is weighing it down, but right. I still will put it. Yeah. That's yeah. all going to be here, which mm -hmm. will still be here all the time. So I'm like, I just want that. I had, I got busted yesterday throwing out uh, a lot of my daughter's artwork. <laughs> 
<laughs> by she her. Op- she opened the garbage can. She's like, Daddy, what what happened? I was like, Oh no. Did they fall in there? And she's like, Yeah, I made these for you. I'm like, Yeah, they're all in there, huh? Let me get those out. <laughs> Well, at least, God, you know what Peter would do back in those days? He'd be like, why did mommy do that? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I didn't get, do that. I didn't, I didn't blame her. I didn't blame my wife. But yeah, I mean, it's just a magic marker on, you know, it's like, it's not like it's the Mona Lisa. So, I'm just, okay, this is great. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't keep it all. Yes. Okay. I think you could keep one a year. One one a year. One a year. They do three a day, though. You There's know? all these things now that are like how you can replace them like you have a frame right and then you put one in and then you're like okay let's replace it with the other and then you know goodbye uh-huh. what's your latest one and then the kids artwork is always displayed but it's actually in a frame okay oh that's not Might a be kind of good yeah um brown pumps are back which yeah. i always think is a scary sign mm-hmm. um with the skimpy red dress but the tree is there so we don't know it, we don't know if this is old or new but she, this was not an interesting article, really. She got caught driving without a license, meaning she just didn't have it on her person. Right. She still has a valid license. Yeah. She doesn't have to go to court. Which is scary in itself. Yes. You know what and I mean? She, like, I think, I don't right. know. Maybe she, I don't but know. That was, uh, that was such the thing that she wanted so badly was, I would just want to drive and get some coffee. Mm-hmm. And um, so she's okay. Uh, like, this, she doesn't have to go to court on October 24th when her book comes out. Right. So there's still an update there. So we'll see. Um, okay, Drake. Uh, remember when I was one of the people that talked a lot about it? How okay. he had been talking to Millie Bobby Brown a lot when she was 14, giving her advice, texting her. And people accused him of grooming. People thought it was right. weird. So he is addressing the criticism um, in a new song called Another Late Night, and the song includes lyrics that reference the criticism of when he started talking to her when she was 14. And some of the lines are, weirdos in my comments talking about some Millie Brown look. Bring them jokes up to the gang. We get to really flocking. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? Drake's statement, okay. So, I don't, what does that even tell us? He's, he'd be flocking. Anyway, he... It's one of his 23 brand new songs um, called For All Dogs, and it features collaboration with Zsa or Zaza, Bad Bunny, 21 Savage. No, if it was a collaboration with Zsa, that'd be fantastic. Who's Zsa Gabor? Zsa Gabor. Darling, I love you, but give me a podcast. Um, anyway, I noticed also some guy who has a podcast that's sort of known or whatever said, I don't like the album, and then they got in a beef, and Drake responded. And TMZ reported that that guy is like now posting like, look, look at my ranking of my podcast. It's just under stuff about the Israeli war. Like it's like oh. nobody ever knew this guy had a podcast. And now because he's talking about Drake and Drake responded, he's like number eight. Oh, great. And so, well, I mean, we I think we know that pattern works. See if we can get this one. Like, uh, we, I don't like I his album know. either. <laughs> yeah. I think we know that pattern works. Right. Um, uh, Taylor Swift is. This Millie Bobby Brown is married to Bon Jovi. Did you know that? She's bon- engaged. She's Bon Jovi's do- son. You know, like how you never know someone's age. If you would tell me that this girl in this photo is, you know, 42. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah. She got her lips done. She got a little Botox around her eyes to lift them. I, I literally don't know. Like, I mean, she could be 18 in that picture. She I, could I, be 18 I don't, or I don't, she I could be 42. I only think she's like 21 or something. No, I know. I'm just saying yeah. it's just so hard to tell what people's ages are anymore. Right. Yeah. I just saw a, a, a like a TikTok of a guy going going to your 40th um high school reunion which would make people 58. People either look 65 or 30. Right. They either had the facelift and look 30 or they and I'm like that is Not so in my high true. school. Nobody looks 30. <laughs> they all look wow. They all look like there's just like a lot of salt in their diet. Just a lot. Just like big giant red heads. Everybody's just Big, it looks a little mushy. I mean, big puffy red heads. <laughs> Myself included. Oh, geez. Yeah. You're the golden bachelor. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Grove here in LA is shutting down the entire Grove. Yeah. And they're putting today, Wednesday. Right. You're hearing this Thursday, though. Um, they're putting her in every theater for her special fans to watch the movie, Taylor Swift's movie. 
And they said, get there at two. So I guess some of these kids are going to have to get out of school a little early. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's a, I mean, I have to say, and I, I mean, I don't know Taylor Swift. I mean, I know what I hear on right. the radio yeah. and stuff. And I don't have no beef with her. I, I've just never seen anybody have this much influence on pop culture uh, ever, I don't think. Well, I don't you know think what? Ever. I think what's really interesting about it is I don't think there's ever been a um, a person yeah, besides myself oh, okay. that have bred, brought mothers and daughters together. Like okay. I get on a obviously minuscule. The haters are gonna love that I compared myself to Taylor Swift. They're gonna fucking like. Be like ah! <laughs> All I'm saying is that one thing I love about my show is that I get a lot of mothers and daughters that are like come to my show and can listen together and can both enjoy it. Okay. And I think as a singer, being that she's like in her early 30s, right. And and the mom and moms. I mean, I love all her songs. It's like. It's different than in the past of like the teeny boppy stuff. Yeah. Where you would, and then also we're at an era where you're like, I'm not going to drop off my 14 year old to go to a concert alone. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, my mom would be like, I remember my brother went to like a three day us concert when he was like 13. It was mm -hmm. like a three day Coachella. And I think he like, I mean, the things that we could do, or even my sister would drive us to go see Duran Duran and she was just got her license. Yeah. And I lost her for like three hours, like right, in right. general admission. Like I was 14. Yeah. No, parents. So I think they go and they support it. So I think it's a, a lot of mother daughters. And father daughters. Right. I and say. father yeah, daughters. So, and they're happy yeah. to go. Right. And so it, that is why it's the biggest thing because it's actually good music. She's likable. All that aside, yeah. Like even the even the Kel the Travis Kelsey, yeah. Like the fact that you know new, his jerseys are selling out. Right. More people are watching the NFL. Uh, there's nobody else who would have that type of impact on. Like if they showed anybody, Beyonce, whoever, yeah. in the you know with a football player, it still wouldn't be the impact that she has on everything. Okay. What if <clears throat> in a little bit. Right. They get to a, the, the team he's on, the Kansas. Kansas City Chiefs, yeah. Yes, is doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. And he's doing really, really well. Right. And then all of a sudden, he just starts, like, doing where... Well, the, like, it happened this week. He Funny starts to fuck that. up. Yeah, she didn't show up to the game this week, and he got injured. And he was t uh, carted off the field. Turns out he was okay. He came back later in the game. But... As soon as that happened, everybody all over Twitter and all over, you know, there it is. It's the it's the uh, Taylor Swift curse. She didn't show up to the game, and now he hurt his leg. So if it happens, do you think that she? But I'm saying, will anybody ever turn on her? Yes, absolutely, hundred percent. They've already they already do. But do you think her girl fans will care? No, the girl fans don't. They're not going to care. In so that's 10 why minutes. I kind of think she'll be okay if he starts to fuck up. Because her fan base, oh, she'll be fine. Football um, fans, there's going to be anyway. forty-year-old men, you know, who are going to be mad at her because they'll believe that they, uh, you yeah, know, she fucked up the Kansas City Chiefs season. I, I, yeah. uh, I mean, you know, I, I just don't get any like. Uh, I honestly, I'll, I'll make a prediction now. I don't think they're together, her and Travis Kelsey. I think it's over, and they're not mentioning it. They're not saying it yet. I've gone I back. Think a couple of weeks, you get it's where we we're, we were still good friends. There are two relationships okay. that I have flip flopped. Oh, over flip flop flip flop. Got it. One is Kyle and Morgan Wade. I'm gonna make you love me. Yeah. First, I thought they were lesbians. Then I thought it was <clears throat> PR. Then I thought it was because she had an interest in her. Right. Now, then I thought, no, it is real. Now I think it's PR again. I don't know. Gotcha. Okay? Are they just friends or are they? You know, having some fun. Yeah. This one is the same. Like, could they just be friends? Yes. Is it just a fun thing to do? Mm -hmm. Her friends are thrilled to go. Right. Whatever. They talked about the the mom was on the Today Show with um, Co Coda Hoppy. Hoda. Yeah. Hoda. So Coda. Hoda and um, Jenna. And she was like, they're like, but do you like her? And she's like, and of course, people analyze that. I'm like, look, she's not a she's not a television personality. The mom, right? She's a boy mom that has dealt with two sons having girlfriends from the time they were 12. Right. Then they're professionals, so she probably knows not to speak. And she probably only met her during the game. I don't think they've gone for a lake weekend for Thanksgiving. Yeah. And and made a turkey together. I don't think she really knows her. So yeah. I think that was kind of she was trying to just be like that. Yeah. But um. 
who knows? And then other people think it's because he's there's something to do with um, his involvement with the vaccine. Uh, oh, that what? That like this is part of a PR thing. Because he's one of the people that yeah, are that like is encouraging encouraging yeah. to get the vaccine. Oh, is that, are they back? Back? Do we got to get that again? Yeah, there's a whole nother one. Oh, it is. Yeah, there's a whole new one. Oh no, that you're supposed to get, or <laughs> that they're encouraging you to get. But I've heard like Martha Stewart talk about it on on shows. Yeah, and all that, and he's been criticized for being a spokesperson for it. Okay, so I don't know. Oh, I don't right. know if this wow. is part of that yeah. machine or not. Yeah. But those are all the theories, just theories. I'll tell you what the people should be upset about. What? The fact that she's closed the Grove on a Wednesday. Well, Rick Caruso, who owns it, said that we are co- that they said he is compensating all the small businesses that also had to close all right, the day. Fair. Okay, what about the people who go? It's a fun place for me to take my daughter. I can kill some time there. <laughs> You know, it's a good place. Got a little fake grass we run around on. Then yeah. We go to the bookstore. Dirty, I... dirty, a lot of dirty carpets in the Barnes and Noble. But listen, I know that bookstores have taken a hit as of late. They don't have the carpet cleaning capabilities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my daughter's always like, let's lay down and read a book together on the floor. I'm like, not here. What? So you only go to the Grove one? The Grove one in Barnes and Noble, yeah. They have the Grove, um, they have Barnes and Noble, uh, like Calabasas, you know? Yeah, we've been there. Sure, I've been to all. Uh, you've been to all of them. Yeah, yeah. And then you could you go see the turtles, right? We go to the turtles. Yeah. yeah. There's a okay. there's a library over there too. We do yeah. it all. Okay, good. I'm just saying, father of the year. Let every let it let be everyone. Known. Well, this girl, um, I forgot her name. It's like Kaya. She was his girlfriend. Right. She's not the girl <clears throat> that said he was a cheater from that one his dating show, uh, chasing catching yeah, Kelsey. Yeah, yeah. But. Page Six picked up something from her podcast where she does this open letter, dear black girl, she is a black woman, Yeah. about, I, it was just this long like speech about like, don't let them put you down, be your, and, and it, I guess it was a response to whatever online backlash she's gotten just because weird fans will come after her because she's in Taylor's now boyfriend's dating history. Yeah. I don't know. But- it was the comments were not really that positive. It was like it's just kind of embarrassing. Right. And I don't even know why you're doing this. Wow. And, and I can get it. I get when you open your phone and you're like, why does everyone hate me? I get that feeling. Yeah. Right. But ugh, as hard as it is to take the advice, the advice is just, 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 just shut up and move on. Shut up and move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it'll all be over in a two weeks. Or, yeah. yeah. Right. Um. Okay. Julia Fox. Has her book coming out as well, Down the Drain or whatever. And she said that they never had sex, she and Kanye. I knew that. They never had se- You knew that while Dwight was Kind of got that vibe. I got that vibe that she was just there to be in pictures or something. I don't know. It's just whack. I also just thought their weird outfits was like a lot of clothes to take off. Like <laughs> yeah. he had the big boots and the jeans. She had the double jean yeah. outfit. 45 and the cor- minutes later. The cor- cones around outside of her jean jacket mm-hmm. on her tits and all of this. And- so um, she said, like, when she met him, she was like, sure. Right when she met him, he just, like, they were outside of a restaurant. He just whipped out his dick and just peed, like, in the alley while she stood there. Oh. And then she was like, wait, I don't want people to take photos of you. And they never had sex. And he, oh, he said, I'll buy, I'll pay for a boob job. Okay. And I guess she didn't want one. <clears throat> and then she was like, I feel like I'm being used because you're still married to Kim. And I, I yeah. don't know. So she just like blew him off. Um, but she certainly became famous because of him. Oh, absolutely. And then she she also said, like, I, there's no way I was going to sign an NDA. This is why she can talk about him peeing in the street. She said, I'm not signing an effing NDA just on principle. I never have and I never will. Unless it's a professional opportunity, then sure. And then, then she later on says being with Kanye was a professional opportunity. So yeah. I'm like, whatever. Right, right. Um, so she's got a book coming out too? She has a book coming out. and oh, Got so much to read. I out. mean, I feel like there's there, she is kind of an interesting bird. Like it might be kind of juicy. But I feel like she's another one of those people that has so many stories about drug addiction and getting over it and all this stuff. And whenever right. I read these books – these memoirs about I was on a four day and I'm not saying hers says this, but whenever I'd read these books about like, you know, I was on a four day um, heroin bender and then this happened and then this happened. And then this person said this to me. I'm like, 
how the fuck do you remember? You were on a four day heroin bender, but I'll enjoy the writing of the story and whoever helped you do yeah, it or not. I, but I, like, I know. I, I have three Bud Lights and I can't remember the night. I know. It's so amazing to me. Like these rock stars who write yeah. these books have such a, but I mean, maybe somebody helps them out. Like there was this time. Asan, what's yeah. his name? <laughs> yeah, Asan Minaj. <laughs> He's the one helping him write right. it. Um, Anyway, so they never had sex. Big shocker. Caitlyn Jenner says that she'll never be in another relationship again. She says she, so she's on this doc that's right now only available in Europe called House of Kardashians. Yeah. I have been able to watch some of it. I'm I'm not in any, of. I'm in, not in the first one. I'm in the second one, a okay. lot of the second one. And yeah, so she's in it, my doppelganger, and then me. And so I hope you don't get confused. We have the exact same hair color. Yeah. The exact it's same a style. very similar haircut. She's a little color. taller than I am, but very similar in looks. Yeah. And um, so anyway, it is it it is really good. It's really well done. I have another episode, and I think it's going to be coming out soon. Right. Like on Peacock or whatever. But um, so she is the star of the show. Like she's talking a lot. And, and then she also said like, there was something else about her. She Everybody. said there's no more, not 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 going to have another relationship, another sexual relationship. She's done with-, yes. with uh, yeah, she said she's got the dogs. Yeah. She is happy with her life. She could have dinner with friends any right. night she wanted. And I'm like, yeah, you're in your 70s. Yeah. You've been married three times. Mm-hmm. Right. It's over. Oh, my God. I just thought of something that would have been so amazing. Caitlin is the golden bachelor. The new bachelor. bachelor the new one. No, we oh. don't need to see it. But oh. but it would be fun, and maybe it's coming, just for her to facilitate a date like I did on The Golden Bachelor. Oh, yeah. That I'll, I If Mike Fleiss hasn't already thought of that, because mm-hmm. Mike Fleiss was friends. Chris Jenner right. used to be the biggest fan of The Bachelor. <clears throat> she used to watch it all the time. And there was a show that they would do, like the after show where they would talk about The Bachelor, and she would be on it. She was okay. so into it. And so Mike Fleiss was like at her dinner parties. He was like at parties that I was at. Yeah. And she was trying to get Cheryl Burke to be The Bachelor because she loved Cheryl Burke from Dancing with Stars, whatever. And I think that would be great. Caitlin comes. I know they already filmed it, but I just, I don't think Caitlin should be on it, but I think she could facilitate a date and I think it would be kind of fun. And she's, you know, good on camera. And I don't know. Right. I'll bring it on. I mean, she likes to ride motorcycles and stuff, she likes old cars. She just goes like, yeah. you know, let me just, in, I don't know, interviews. Caitlin come pulling up on But a I'm not surprised that she doesn't want anything serious. No, that should be the way. That I mean, wasn't what it was about, over, you know. Right? And um, and then she said, Caitlin admits that she tried to dodge the daughter's Kim Kardashian sex tape scandal as best she could. So I believe that's in the third episode of this three-part doc. Okay. They really get into the truth about the sex tape. The re okay yeah so I'll dive into that in future episodes. I mean that closer. seems so long ago and uh, honestly weirdly enough now so tame. So like, tame. Like even like even this if the scandal side of it whatever it is if she released it on purpose and whatever yeah but then now it's like who I mean does anyone even care anymore now they're so part of the world yeah it's, all, it's like, like nothing's gonna come from it yeah so, so just like Hassan you lied about something right. You didn't, yeah. you were, you created a false narrative 15 years ago. Right. I'm still going to buy your skims. Yeah, I know that. And I'm still going to buy yeah. your, like, who cares? Yeah. Right. So, um. Does anybody use the kiosks in the airport of the Kylie Cosmetics? I saw that the other day. I, does it, They're everywhere. The, every airport has the Kylie Cosmetic, uh, you know, like a machine that you get the Kylie Cosmetics every airport. And I, I just feel like that's not like a impulse buy. Like, I got to get to. Well, they used to have Benefit, which is another brand. Yeah. So I think they were just maybe those machines were just replaced by, by hers. Yeah. Um, I don't know. When you're shopping around, it might be kind of fun. Or you might your teenager might be like, oh, mom. Or or, to... or maybe you forgot your lipstick. And you're like, just perfect. All it's right. It's a lip kit. Yeah. All I right. don't know. It's still doing well. Um, oh, no, she's killing it. So, oh, I want to talk about this story. Because this was like, I've seen this everywhere. Trevor Bauer, he had this accuser named Lindsey Hill. Now, tell me a little bit. He's a baseball player. He's a pitcher. Uh, yeah, signed a huge contract with the Dodgers. Um, yeah. Uh, two years ago now. Um, and he was, you know, he was a huge pitcher. I think he signed a $200 million contract. Huge contract. 
Anyway, uh, I don't think he ever actually pitched for the Dodgers because this happened right, right. before. And, and so he gets with this, the way I understand it from just reading it, he got with this girl. Right. And afterwards, she accused him of- Beating her up. Yes. Right. And rough, then, During rough sex. During rough sex. And yeah. then he released a taped conversation he had with her mm -hmm. where he- where they talked it out, and he was like, don't you remember telling me that you liked this right. and everything, and you, you were basically instructing me, in which he sort of admits it. Yeah. And they were both, like, suing each other. Like, she was suing him, and he was counter-suing her. And he, there were text messages that some attorney found with her and another girl that was like, he's worth $51 million. Right. And the girl's like, secure that bag, girl. And she's like, I'm going to have him choke me out tonight, and, like, all this stuff. So they've now since dropped both of their lawsuits. Well, also, on her phone, in the same text message chat yeah. with that girl, she sent some pictures of her in the bed. He's asleep. She's next to him in the bed, and she took a picture like, here I am with Trevor Bauer. And in this picture, she has no bruises on her face or anything. Um, and that's the next morning. So now Trevor Bauer did, a, did a, this whole uh, thing on his Instagram or whatever and told his story and said, these pictures were not allowed in the in the uh, pre trial, trial or whatever, yeah. yeah. And he goes, but I want you to see them. Like, here she is next to me in the bed with no bruises or anything. Anyway, it's all, he's been, he's a problem in many ways. In, he for is? Yeah, he's done a lot of crazy things in baseball. He's so, he's out of baseball completely. I think he pitches in Japan Well, they, they, they said, though, because of this, though, they, um, he couldn't. They suspended him for two full seasons. Yeah, which actually turned out to be 194 games. Right. I mean, yeah. that's pretty awful. No, no, no. He's, if this is not, if this, if yeah. this now really didn't happen. Right, right. Yeah, he's kind of he's kind of done in baseball, and I think he pitches in Japan now, and and I don't think he can come back to Major League Baseball just on the, the you know, the accusations just, alone. You know, now they with like professional players, you know, they they want to bring in like financial advisors in a good way so that these right. guys don't get taken by their friends and their family. But I was saying to Sarah, I'm like, what about this type of stuff? And she said, no, they have it. Like they have it for players. And um, there was some, there was somebody, maybe it was her or somebody else said like when there was like, they, there was when they joined the team, they would have photos of the women and they're like, this one has eight children from yeah. these different players. She comes to the game. The, she is going to go to your gym. She might approach, like, almost like like how they do this, like, don't let this person cash a check here. Right. Like, it was, like, literally, like, she's going to find you at your Starbucks. Right. And you need to be aware of these seven women. Right. I bet. Because I bet. you're 19 and dumb yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. and Rich, dumb, and, like it's yeah. Wow. I don't know, but it, interesting story. I mean, it's just, yeah. I, I feel bad for these guys. Yeah. You know. You know, and how people would, you know, put the hot sauce in the condom. They, like, after they get rid of their condom, yeah. they're so told to put hot sauce in it. What does so that, that So that the woman can't get the condom and shove it back up there oh. trying to get pregnant. And so there's been times where women have been caught because then their coochie's on fire. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And then you're never to accept a condom oh. from a woman because she could have taken a safety pin and poked it. And then so really? you have an unopened condom. Okay. And you would never be able to see with your naked eye yeah. that there's holes in it. Wow. Is there any specific hot sauce? <laughs> like Tabasco? I like the truff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't oh, like truff. Oh, oh my I don't God, like I it. love truff. I don't like it. I got it at Costco because everyone was raving about it. Oh, you don't like the pasta no, sauce? No, it's too much. It's too- I, it's, uh, I, it's never too much truffle too garlicky for garlicky or something. I didn't like Sometimes it. Sometimes people are just over the truffle. I'm not. Yeah, truffle. That's the- Yeah. I would like to come back as a truffle pig <laughs> in my next life because I can never have enough truffle. <laughs> right. Really? Yeah. I, my, I don't like the truffle. My friend Liz is like, it's too much for me. Like, I, 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 I can't. I'm with Liz. And then I'm like, oh, can't we get the white mushroom pizza with the truffle? And she's like, fuck, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't like it. <laughs> okay, this girl, Sexy Red, denies leaking, le leaking her own sex tape. She's a rapper. And I just thought it was interesting because now we were talking about how what a scandal it was with Kim Kardashian's sex tape. And now people are just releasing their own. Well, a lot of people have done that over the years. Yeah. There was a girl from Survivor who... She has a breakout sound song called Pound Town. You better believe it. Let's go. 
<laughs> I love Pound Town. She really Let's started go. a sex positive wave. And sex positive. I, I think I'm gonna agree with uh what's sexy red? I'm sexy gonna red. With, I'm gonna agree with her. I, I think more sex positive. Well, enough is enough. People are saying the reason you accidentally released your sex tape is because she was got bad attention. So she's trying to deflect attention away from her recent comments about Donald Trump, in which I guess she showed support for him while talking to Theo Vaughn on his podcast. Oh, all right. As we know, Theo doesn't care about, you know, yeah. <laughs> exposing she's, she's bad a, things about people. Uh, but yeah. Well, I mean, she's sex positive. Her name's Sexy Red. Why Pound not Town. have a sex tape? Yeah, and her song's called Pound Town. I think it all it all goes it all together. But I guess yeah. she said something, so she had to like I'd, say, I'd give "Let that me just." A listen. So any, so next time I get in trouble for anything, get ready for a sex tape. To, yeah. So yeah. that's the thing to do. Like, let's say everyone's like, "Whoa, Chris said something on his you know podcast, and it was right. bad." Uh -huh. You are gonna just need to accidentally or. Just, I don't think anybody needs to see that, you know, or just like something just like nude. And then you have to act like I can't believe like, yeah. like, I guess in her case, like, I guess if someone I guess the thing to new PR thing to do is you get in trouble for something. People are like, I can't believe that she supported this political cause. I don't like. Right. So then you tell like so then you act, you tell your people act like some old flame posted you know and then yeah. everyone's like oh my god we're seeing this because you're like i don't care if someone sees me having sex but then that deflects from the fact that they're mad that you didn't say the politically correct thing yeah i think that's more the new way to get out of it really need to adopt and i'm surprised more people don't especially like a hassan minaj or even sexy yeah. even sexy red yeah uh i think more people really need to adopt like just saying fuck off you know, I, I'm surprised more people don't like if Samanaj came out today and go, yeah, I made up some stories. Big deal. Fuck off. I feel that would fix everything. And I don't know why more people don't take that approach because Hassan yeah. Minaj can go on to do a podcast and be fine in life. Yes. He doesn't need the comp, the, the daily show? tour and yeah. he can make a ton of money. He doesn't need to be on The Daily Show anymore, Comedy Central or anything. Sexy Red can do fine releasing her stuff on her own. And but is Hassan like so hilarious like a Louis C.K. that his audience, like the Louis C.K. audience, it doesn't care no, exactly. that he whipped out his right. dick and masturbated in front of some women because they've probably done it too. Right. So right. they're like, you know, yeah, like, no. like that's not you're on the totem pole of like being a creep from the last five years. They put him, yeah. you know, lower middle half or whatever. Um, and so, like, I don't know how hardcore his audience is. Yeah. Like, I think there's certain people where their audience will be like, I don't care. Like, I don't care what you do. And, I think and a lot of go people, away yeah. for six months and come back and then like address it at the top of the show and smirk. Uh -huh. And then just say your st and then get into your stuff. Right. I mean, I think you guys, I forget who you had on who was talking about it recently, you know, about Hugh Grant. Right. It was Brad, I think, Brad Well. Yeah. And it was the kind of the best way to handle that at the time. I mean, we all remember how, right. how big a scandal that was. Yeah. And he just went on, smirked, and, and went, you know, now he's playing in Oompa Loompa in the new. <laughs> and he's the only one. Yeah. And, the, just... and all the Oompa Loompas didn't get a job. I know. And all the, yeah, all the little people are very, they're like, wait a minute. I could have. No, I could have done this. Wait, is that show coming back again? Willy Wonka, Timothy Chalamet. Oh, that's right. That's right. And Hugh Grant's one of the Oompa but, Loompas. But you know, they they did the same thing with um the when the Seven uh, to War. No, but but they also did the same thing when they redid it with Johnny Depp. Yes. They didn't have a bunch of little people. They had one guy right dancing around that they you know repeated. Greatest little people story ever. I know we've probably talked about it before on this show, but I'm going to say it one more time because. It, it, it was wrong, and but yet hilarious. We did a sketch for Chelsea Lately where we needed a bunch of little people. It was going to be a chewy thing, and we were at Chelsea's house. Yes, yeah, a that? chewy pool party. Yeah, so, a chewy yeah. pool party, and we had a bunch of little people come, and there was one person who showed up. We had cast these people, and one person who showed up who looked small, little, short, but not necessarily a little person. And we were like, hmm. 
yeah, I don't know if this one's going to work. So we had to have one of the production assistants because we were t cowards and didn't want to do it. We had to have one of the production assistants go over to the woman and say, thank you for coming, but I don't believe you're a little person. And she Did said, they get out the measuring tape? Because <laughs> legally, legally, yes. you can be considered a little person legally. I think if you ha I, I think you have to be 4'9 or under. I, well, I, you cannot I, be 4'11". I know this one. This woman was like four eleven, and mm -hmm. we couldn't. You, we were just like, we're sorry, we gotta. We, sorry, we can't. And she got into her car with nine other people. Just kidding. <laughs> and they drove to the scene. No, but yeah, it's. Uh, I remember having to send that that woman home because she was not. She was four eleven. You know how, like, how there's those like TikToks. The for, things like, we had to do on that show. You know how there, so there how there's like those TikTok stitches where people are like. Is there a word you mispronounce that has haunted you for the rest of your life or whatever? Mm -hmm. Well, I have so many. Forget it. But, like, there is this one time I was at the Growling seeing a show. Mm -hmm. And it was before Chelsea Lately. Maybe I was, I was in my 20s. And this will haunt me. And there was who I th there was this person, okay, with long blonde hair and, like, bell bottom and, like, a little um, stylish, like, leopard coat. Right. And I was like, oh, my God, look how cute that little girl is. And then she turned around and she was a little person. Yeah. Still, it still haunts me. Yeah. I mean, I still see myself exactly how that I must have felt. But, I mean, I'm sorry. I just saw her from the back. And I just I thought it was just someone brought their kid that they really stylishly dressed in adult way, which a lot of people do. Right. And I'm pretty sure she heard me. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I, I'm just still like, yeah. It's I was just with, these things that I just feel so bad. I was about. walking I like, with Chewy one time in Japan. We were there for something I forgot, and Chewy and I were walking down the street in Japan. And Chewy, his whole life must have had people pointing at him and stuff. That's just the way it is. And little kids will point and do whatever. So some little kid in Japan had pointed at Chewy and said something like, "Look at mommy. Look at that little person." And I think it it was sixty years of people pointing at him had just finally. He snapped, and I was standing right there. And he turned to this little four-year-old who was wearing like a weird hat, and he goes, well, "Look at you, look at you, and uh, you, look at your stupid hat." And I was like, "Oh no, oh no, Chewie, come on, let's go." I'm like, sorry. I mean, it was wild that I had to like take him away, and because he was he was ready to fight a four-year-old in Japan. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's. Yeah. You should have told him all of you must have been. Right. You know, because I hear that when you go to Japan and you're like yeah. blonde or whatever. Mm -hmm. They are like very excited. Yeah. To... Yeah. Anyway. Um, this guy, I saw this from Hollywood Unlock. It says Gunplay has reportedly lost custody of his daughter after not showing up for court. And I just want to say, um, I do think it would be hard if your name was Gunplay mm -hmm. um, to yeah. say I'm really the fit parent. Like right. maybe think about these names mm -hmm. in case you don't stay with your the mother of your child. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it got to be a little bit harder. And part of the reason that she won is because she the wife alleged that he um that he was uh pulled a gun on her while she was holding the daughter. So his name was Gunplay, That's right? And then he held a gun on her. Yeah. And then he didn't show up for court. And he's like, "Why won't you let me be with my daughter, Judge?" Yeah. I always love when they have to, because when they go to court, they have to say their real name, you know, Gunplay, a.k.a. Todd Stevens, you know, just like a normal, regular guy name. <laughs> I always, just, yeah, I always think it's yeah. just so fun. Like, you know, like all the names, the Bad Bunny, that right. like, and, um, you know, like 50 Cent, his name was Curtis. Right, yeah, Curtis Jackson. And yeah. so when, when Chelsea was dating, it was like, oh, it's Curtis, you know, uh -huh. like, I was like, oh. Yeah, he always introduced himself as Curtis when we yeah. met him. Yeah, so. But, but I then guess people it was weird be like, and then it wasn't fifty; it was fitty. Fitty, yeah. But it was, mm -hmm. yeah. I never. Oh, he's him that. coming after. I guess he's coming after P Diddy. This whole thing with the guy singing like, singing like a canary about the, we're going to finally find Tupac. out Tupac and yeah. Biggie, and people mm -hmm. thinking P Diddy or Puff Daddy or whatever you want to call him, Sean right. Combs was involved. Yeah. And does he, did he know this was coming down? And this is why he gave all of his artists their rights to their music back. What other stuff is going on with his, you know, he'd he'd like, you know, have all these young male artists in his yeah. camp that he would, there's rumors about that. Whoa. 
You haven't heard about that? I mean, I heard about it, you know. Yeah. I don't know. F- Fitty, Curtis, he yeah. likes to talk. Yeah. Um, now, California has banned the red food dye found in Skittles. Yep. Yeah. Um, and red it's, food also dye. Yeah, here's the thing, People... it's also in Pedia. It's also in Pedia It's in everything. I've read like a million things, but yeah. I don't know. My son had a lot of Pedia so I'm sorry, Drake. Uh-huh. I don't know what to say. He seems fine, right? Who yeah. yeah. I mean, he it made him real tall. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I would probably say. I guess. I don't know. I guess. I guess Pedia Sure can go back and just take it out, or is it so much stuff that you can't take it out? Is the That's whole product just done? Like, no. I think they just have to take it out. They just have to take out the red dye number three, and they can still. You can still have Skittles. Like Mario Lopez was very upset. He posted about this. That he was upset that this is. He believes there's bigger problems in the world than going after Skittles. Well, there are bigger problems, but still, right. this is a, a problem. Yeah. Who cares? Something. If if all these other countries are saying it's bad, it causes cancer. Why are we like we don't care? Right. Like just eat something else. I don't even like Skittles. How do you like that? But I you actually remember? Like them? Do you really? And my kids really did like them. Yeah. Yeah, because okay. they're just like refreshing and just like you only need a handful and just that burst of flavor. Okay, too chewy. I'm just going to say too chewy. What about Starburst? Mm, it's not my first choice. What about... Um, I Do you remember, red? The, speaking of red dye number three, uh, do you remember when they just discontinued red M&Ms when we were younger? There were red M&Ms in the bag. Then they yeah. said no more red M&Ms because of red dye number three. We can't do any more red M&M's. And then for years, there were no red M&M's. And then, boom, red M&M's were back because I guess they started putting red dye number three back in. But they knew in the 70s that it was a problem. Did you hear about this this new thing for little kids? I think it's so good. Okay, so you go trick-or-treating with your kid. Mm -hmm. And then you come home and you say, you take out all the candy and you're like, pick five or whatever. And then we're going to put the rest out for the witch switch or something to come. Yeah. And then in the morning, there's like a Barbie and the candy's been taken. And so then she's all excited the next day to get her gift from the witch switch or switch witch or whatever. Right. And then you don't have to deal with this candy and you can just chuck it or you can put it away or whatever. And she doesn't have to ask about it anymore. Pretty good idea. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. Because the fun of it is just going around and getting it. Right. But I always remember, like, people would be like, oh, well, then you can donate it or whatever. I'm like, but then I don't – nobody should be having this much candy. Right. I I wish there were more easy things to give out that aren't candy. I feel like we're donating <laughs> I, – I, I was in the airport yesterday. Yeah. And I'm ringing up something at, you know, one of those Hudson News places or whatever. Yeah. And the woman goes, do you want to donate a bottle of water to the troops? I was like, the American troops? Like – I feel like they got enough water. You know, I don't think American troops would like, oh, oh. <laughs> we need water. <laughs> like, well, also, it's like so weird. Like, okay, we're going to put this one aside. That's going to go in a right. box. Right. I know. I'm like, like why I would just, it just be a dollar? I feel dollar? there's going to be a disconnect between you, me and this lady yeah. and that water getting to the guy in, in a cobble. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen. So, but the questions now before I actually get to the point where I'm out the door Do, or doing the dollar. Yeah. And it's just going to ask you a quick question. And it's like, you owe, I always do the dollar because I'm like, God forbid I don't do the dollar. And this girl does a TikTok about me that I didn't do the dollar. <laughs> you mean the tip or the charity? Because there's no, the tip. You get about four of them now. It's the it's tip, the tip. It's the charity. It's the, uh, what'd you think of me? What'd you think of the service? One, give it a one to 10. Yeah. You get that one now. And it's like for the coffee, you add the dollar. Yeah. And then you're just like, you know what? I want the people to have the dollar, you right. know? But then you're like, I'm the asshole that just spent $7 on a coffee. Yeah. Like, what the fuck was that? Like, know. you know, like, why am I ever getting, I do not deserve it. I don't deserve a $7 yeah. coffee. Like, I, I just don't. T- I was a tipped employee for many years, so I have the soft spot I always, in my heart. I'll do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. For- but it kind of makes me, as I'm getting in line, being like, it's just hard for me. Like, I can right. afford it, whatever, but it's just hard for me to be like, I just going in general, I don't want to. Sp- I yeah. just feel like that's such a waste. I think about it and I'm like, God, minimum wage is this much. And if someone wanted a yeah. coffee that made minimum wage, this would be half their minimum wage. I just don't know one how coffee. Do it. Yeah, I saw a thing yesterday that. 
they're saying, you know, a lot of people don't go back, aren't going back to work still. You know, it's still some, a lot of these places are still uh, vacant. And, yeah. these, and they were saying, uh, if you go into a city, whatever, New York City, say coming from Jersey or Long Island, you go into New York City to work, you spend about $50 a day uh, on, you know, out, out going to work for lunch, for coffee, for the commute, for whatever. And that that's no longer out there. That fifty bucks, you know, multiplied by what it have, to, yeah, three hundred million people or whatever. That's now no longer a part of the, you know, this commerce wheels of commerce. Oh, but there's a they're lot missing like, out. Yeah, they're missing out. Like yeah. you, the people. So and you stay home, work from home. You're not putting out at fifty bucks a day, right? So I mean, I feel like I walk out of the house. I it's a hundred and it's two thousand dollars a day. I can't leave the house for less than that. It's always just what I gotta buy some stupid skeleton at you know, we got fifty fucking skeletons at the house now. We're all singing and dance. I can't like it's a good thing I'm not like a cheater or anything. Like trying to walk into my house now, it's like every fucking bah, 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 bah. Every skeleton singing. Oh my god, I want to come. Cuz they're all motion it. activated and every they're all singing and dancing on the way in. I can't sneak out. So, NASA plans to build houses on the moon by 2040. Yeah. Perfect. Who is going there? Uh, like and then there all the comments were like, "Really? Like this is the plan? What I don't know. I guess they're doing these 3D houses and all or the 3D printer houses and Yeah. Okay, but like I still think, you know, Whatever. I never want to go. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. Yeah. Why would I want to be bouncing around at the moon? <laughs> or when you go in your house, you don't bounce around. Yeah, because it's like 400 degrees on the moon or something. I don't think yeah, you like, can what go you... outside. I mean, it's bad enough that we make construction workers work when it's like 110. Yeah. Now they have to go over there. Right. Eat their sandwich on the side of the moon <laughs> floating away. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I just see this and I'm just like, oh my God, I don't right. even want to. There's so many things in the world that happen, you know, that are horrible that I'm like, I'm really glad my parents are dead. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm curious to know what they would think, but I also think they'd be so sad that I'm like, I'm glad they're not seeing it. Only fans, okay? This cop, um, female cop, pulled this guy over. Yeah. And he was like, uh, excuse me, like, I just paid $29. For the driver ticket. said, um, the driver, she pulled over, definitely has a problem with it. He goes, I wouldn't want her to be arresting me when I just saw you and your husband last night for $29.99 having sex on OnlyFans. So she's the hardcore OnlyFans. She's, she does the sex. Yeah, she's not doing the Denise Richards who's yeah. doing collabs with her own daughter. Right. See me and, and Charlie Sheen's daughter. We're doing an OnlyFans collab. But what are doing they, are collabs. they in a bikini or anything? They're probably just doing sexy outfits and, yeah. and photo shoots. I mean, I don't think she's making out with her daughter. But like... Um, but what are you going to do? You know, she doesn't get child support anymore from Charlie Sheen. Right. And um, she doesn't want to go to Canada to do any Hallmark movies. So she's going to do a collab with her daughter. And the daughter doesn't want to be an actress. The daughter's like, I don't want to learn sitcom she's lines. She's on, yeah. I just want to do this OnlyFans. So this Isn't girl's she like, doing hardcore stuff too, though? Wasn't she? The daughter? Yeah. She said, I'm going to show my boobs after I get my boob job was the last thing I read. So I think she's oh. gotten a boob job. She was saving it for that. But you um, know what? I'm moving to the moon. <laughs> I know. Maybe we do go to the moon. I'm just like, I've yeah. had about enough. How do you do OnlyFans if you have to stay in that outfit, <laughs> yeah. bouncing around? <laughs> this is for only people not yeah. on OnlyFans mm -hmm. can go to the moon. Anyway, people, you're not supposed to have a side job, I guess, when you're in the police. This is the Minneapolis cops. So you're not supposed to have a side job. So they oh. don't know what to do because this is not really like she's, it's not like she's working at a restaurant on her off right, days. Right. So I feel like a lot think? of people are getting busted, like teachers and stuff. Yeah. And OnlyFans. I mean, Whatever. Uh, if people want to go out there. They're trying to really turn this into a comedy thing. I don't know if you've been approached yet. What they're do you mean a comedy thing? OnlyFans. They're trying to get oh, away from like the fans porn. More like, comedy. Put your comedy special on Only OnlyFans and things like that. But it does have such a... Like the first thing people think is porn when they think only. I always fans. feel like, why is someone trying to debrand something that's super successful? I know. Just, just lean let in. It, yeah, just let it be porn. Just I let know. it be porn. Let it be the naked stuff. Yeah, we. I mean, I love they. We got to shoehorn comedy into everything. It's like, leave the let the porn people have their porn. No comedy bullshit. I know, but at first I thought that I'm like. Wait, is this like for people to like do their stand up and lingerie? I didn't know what the fuck they were no, asking. No, they're actually me. like trying to make it like a legitimate, not just porn. Um, Chet Hanks, son of Tom Hanks. Yeah, he is supposedly flirting with Kim Zolciak, who's going through her divorce. 
on the surreal life MTVs. You know that everyone thinks it's, they stole the cancel house idea. It's yeah. called Villain House. Villain. House of Villains. House of Villains on E. On E. e. Yeah. I definitely think it's not, I think, again, our idea, yes. Did, do I, do mm-hmm. I think someone listened to it? Maybe. Right. And then realized it will be a lot easier to get a bunch of has-been villains from reality shows than getting people that were canceled that might want to come back. Right. So your idea of cancel house, of taking all the canceled people, mm-hmm. was a better idea in concept, but executing, I think it would have been hard. Oh, it would have been, yeah, you're not going to get Matt Lauer and Kevin Spacey to live in a house together. It would have been great, but you're not. You no, know. you're not, ever. Yeah, so. so you're only going to get these people that were yeah, like dicks on the reality show. Yeah, right. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go, Jax is, is on it, from mm-hmm. Vanderpump, and he's his restaurant is opening up, so he's having something for it. Oh, so I'm okay. gonna go and um, see his restaurant, which is in the valley. Yeah, it's and over. I, I it's drove on past it. It's on yeah. Ventura, yeah, I'm gonna go like, see that, and then um, and, and you know, watch it. But whatever. I mean, good for him. Yeah, I mean, that's like, what he's that's what he's yeah. supposed to do. If but supposedly they're flirting, team. and I think Chet Hanks is such a weirdo. So I think that'll be kind of fun to watch. I mean. He's really the Rita Wilson, Tom Hanks kid. He's the Rita Wilson one. Then he has the other one, Colin. That's like Colin, who looks just, just like, like Tom. and is like a and great married like and a and kid yeah. and like a work like. And then he's been the he's the white rapper and you yeah. know has said controversial things mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But he looks nothing like Tom Hanks. This guy Chet, he yeah, really doesn't look like Tom Hanks. And Colin looks just like Tom. Right. Hanks. I and mean, then there was there's another happen. show that he could have been on that was like famous by association or something. It was like where people would have to guess who are you? Oh, I'm the niece of Tom Hanks. Or I'm the did you ever see the, I never watched it. One of the Jonas brothers was like the host. Oh really? And it was like, um and people are like, no, you should watch it. But then they were you'd have to guess. So they're in a house uh-huh. and then they're guessing like your brother would be there. Okay. Almost like a mass singer but yeah, with the, without their mask on, and they're kind of like, and then if they guess who you are, then you get kicked out. But I'm like, it's just not hard to guess who these people are. Yeah, Spe- yes. Yeah, so right. I don't know if it was that big of a hit, but that was like on regular show, and I don't know if these shows, if anyone cares about these shows anymore. No, you know what I mean. Like, like but, who's on the surreal life? The surreal life. Again, I only recognize like half of them. The, yeah. the House of Villains, I only recognize half of them because if you don't watch. Basketball right. Wives, or you don't watch Housewives or something, and someone's on, and there's no real Housewives on it. Oh, I think Daniel Staub makes an appearance from New Jersey. Oh, but good. like, like Jax is probably the biggest person, and yeah. then I see in the preview that Spencer Pratt like makes an appearance. And, oh, you know. I saw that. He so comes he'll walking show up in the yeah. house, and then they goof on him. Like, who? And, you know, the, he goes, "I'm um, I'm Spencer Pratt," and then like the next five people, are like, "Who's that old man?" or whatever. I'm like, All right. Yeah, I saw. I watched the trailer for it. It yeah. could be kind of funny. Yeah. Um, let me see what else I want to say. Here's my headshot. I found it. Oh, I remember that headshot. Yeah. This is when I I talked about it on Tuesday show, so I found it and posted it. Shannon had it, and um, I just can't believe I never booked anything. Never, right? I did book yeah. a Marine Land commercial, which was like a poor man Sea World, and it was out in Palos Verdes. Yeah, I think that's where now. What's the hotel in the Palos Verdes? Oh my God, I, I don't just, know. I was picking something. I'm getting oh. right here. Um, what was the um? Wait, you, there's a hotel like there now. Okay. it's like a fancy hotel in Palos Verdes. Yeah, and um, there was this place called Marine Land. You know, with the with the things that like a Sea World. Sea World, yeah. yeah. And I got a, I got the part because they were introducing the fact that the mom and the and the child whale were going to yeah. do an act together, whatever. And so I remember they're like, "This is your dad. Pretend this is your dad." And my dad was like forty five when he had me. So at yeah. this point, he's like over fifty, and he always had white hair. And they gave me this dad that I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Like this guy's like hot as shit." Like he was like, I just remember I had to like bounce on his arm and he was so young and fit i was like this is my dad this is the only part i booked i was like (laughs) now that could be on OnlyFans. (laughs) you could put that commercial (laughs) so i'm like and i had to point and be like look look you know look at the shamu and her daughter or whatever and then so we're waiting for the commercial come out we're waiting for and 
you know that back then you just had we just had to have the TV on to see our commercials. My sister yeah. had like all my sister had like all these commercials, like detergents and you know really? all these products. Yeah, you guys Shannon, are all in the business. Shanna did really well. Yeah, but wow. I didn't. And so um, then like we, I'm, I'm like finally I booked something. I'm so excited to see it. And I remember like where we were in the kitchen where we had this TV at the end of this long table. And they, the news breaks, like very sad news out of uh, Palos Verdes at Marine Land. The mother like freaked out and. The mother like whale? Smothered the baby. Oh. So the, my whole the commercial, whale. the killer whale yeah, somehow killed that. its yeah. child. Yeah. So now my whole commercial that oh. was about the baby. <laughs> I mean, your career could have taken off. You could have been, you would have been on the surreal life right now, banging Chet Hanks. <laughs> oh. And I was like, well, they're like, I mean, yeah. that's all. I mean, we were sad because I mm -hmm. met, you know, I saw the baby. Yeah. But I was also, my mom was like, well, now it's not going to replay and you're not going to get any residual checks. Yeah. Like, I only got the one day payment. Well, yeah. Well, that's too bad. Because my sister would get a lot of money from the residuals. But I feel like you you put yourself in a you, in a corner making like a cowboy. Like you, it's this is a wet, very western look. I, 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 that's what she wanted me to wear, the Iris Burton. Where's, what's Iris Burton up to these days? You know what? <laughs> Sharon Stone played her in that movie. Uh, she played her in the movie about that the the weird movie that didn't make it the room. Oh really? Sharon Stone played Iris Burton. She was a real agent. Oh, oh my, really? Oh, that's interesting. But I mean, Sharon Stone, and yeah. I, yeah. Well, I and was so, not in the business. Um, oh, they was a baseball player. Yeah, and I remember going like I how when they gave me the L.A. Dodgers hat. Yeah. And this is like you could see this is like a street like on like Melrose off of Melrose, yeah, right? Right, right, right? At the photographer's house, and. And they gave me that baseball mitt. And I was like, what? Like, I don't play baseball. Like, yeah. like that's where I was just like, that's why I sucked in the thing. <laughs> like, and then I'd be like doing characters and dancing around. And my mom would be like, why can't you be like that? You know, you're wasting my time. And I'm like, I know I am. Like, I'm like, I'd get there. I'd like be asleep in the car by the time we got to Hollywood Boulevard. I mean. And then she'd I, be like trying to braid my hair and it would like have knots in it. And I'm crying in the back of the car. And then oh, it's almost good that you didn't make it then. Because I think if you made it then, you wouldn't be here now. You know what I mean? Definitely not. Yeah. I would be on. A, right. I probably would be on OnlyFans. Or just like completely out of the business. And you yeah, talk just about these days like, that I was on seven commercials. Yeah. I was in a Skittles commercial before they banned it. Or like, um, yeah, if I actually got into like the acting and got yeah, like a right. kid role. Yeah. I yeah. uh, I was never like in the bit. I used to. I remember I saw an ad in the paper when I was a kid for the circus. Like join Ringling Brothers. Join it. Yeah. Like get go to clown college, become a circus. And I remember I used to use it, like as if my fan. I was mad at my family. Like shut up, Dad. I'll join the circus. <laughs> and my father's like, go ahead. Like, like I was seriously gonna go to clown college. That was my. Like that guy. Could you I'm in clown. There used to be a thing like clown. College. I when we were in Lake Tahoe, we went to like this performance of um, a, a man and woman, like whatever magician. Yeah. And um, and I was like, oh my god, I remember when you know I was trying to like make it in Hollywood or whatever. And I went, and I'm like, I think I could be a singer. So I tried to be a singer on a cruise ship. Oh. And no. the guys like. Yeah, you got to like take voice lessons, but check out this guy if you want. So I'm like, all right. So I go meet the guy at his place and he's like, okay, let's see if you could be like a lounge singer, whatever. Right. So I like sing a song and he's like, all right, I could work with you. And I could probably get you in this lounge in Lake Tahoe. Oh. And you could work at this lounge every night in Lake Tahoe at like whatever. And. And you were interested in something like that? That sounded like a Yeah, I just was I just thought, oh my God, to be able to perform as a living. Right. I'll just do whatever. Mm -hmm. And I come home, I like tell my dad, Dad, I think I'm gonna like work to be a singer. Like he's like, What? No, <laughs> he's Yeah. No, you're not. He's like, Why are you leaving Hollywood to go to Lake Tahoe? I'm like, right. I don't know. I just am like so tired of going out for things that I never get, you know, like I just kind of was like, at least I'd feel like I was like right. being artsy, but I'm not yeah. even good. What song, good do you, enough. what song do you sing in the audition? Is it your go-to? Didn't you have a go-to? 
I've had a go-to forever, which is let's give him something to talk about, which is the easiest song yeah, for Bonnie karaoke. Sure. Yeah. I think, um, you know, it was something more like loungy, okay. like when the clock strikes <laughs> after six, dear. I don't know the words. Yeah, let the billows start to spread. Not bad. And then I was like, this is about someone getting killed by a shark, right? Nah, <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's because it's like knife, yeah, yeah, because the shark eats somebody yeah. and then the blood bleeds oh. out, oh, but it's like a jazzy song. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah, sure. Yeah, so wow. there you go, Chris. Yeah. Where can everybody find you? Uh, everything, you know, Frangiola Fun has all my dates. I'm coming uh, Milwaukee this Sunday. I'm in Milwaukee. That'd be nice yeah. to see people come to the Milwaukee Improv. Definitely. And I'm at the Grand Comedy Club in Escondido, California, Fun. on the 20th and 21st. Escondido Grand Comedy Club. And then on and on and on. Good Nights in Raleigh, Charlotte Comedy Zone, Cleveland Hilarities. Oh, that's I love the, I the guy. I'm just doing one night. Yeah, Nick. He's the, the greatest. The best, yeah. And then Helium in Buffalo, Governors in Levittown, Stadium Theater in Rhode Island, and Comedy at the Carlson. And on. French all that fun has everything. Are and you back fun. on the road it's anytime so soon? It's so fun. Well, I have my big show at uh, the weekend of Bravo Oh, you're Con, right. Juicy you're Bravo Con. Con. And that is uh, November fourth. It's sold. It's sold out. I mean, yeah. People are like trying to get tickets, and I, there's nothing I can really do. I just hope that yeah. the people that have the tickets go, and if they don't go, I hope they give them to somebody else because I don't want to go out there and have a sold out show. And I look out, it's not sold out. Yeah. And then the bloggers are like, "It was never sold out." <laughs> I'm sitting next to an empty seat right now. So, like, every time someone's like, yeah. hey, I've got a seat and I can't go now, I post it in my Juicy Scoop Obsessed because I'm like, right. you paid for it. I want, you know, yeah, I want people there. So, um, but I'm really excited. I mean, Brandy and Julie are going to be there and we'll just be talking about all the Juicy Scoop and it'll be, be super fun, fun and staying be a at fun the Venetian. Weekend in Vegas. Yeah. It'll be really, you know, I guess I'll see that big sphere. The sphere. Things wild. I keep seeing pictures of it sticking out above the whole city, and it's like a jack o' lantern and a but like basketball. But, but, but I want to know: can is it like bothering people who live in homes by it? Like, is it like bright all night, and you got to like I don't get know. your blackout blinds? I do hear it's uh, it, it's stopping traffic on the because the, the the whatever freeway that is goes right past it, and people are stopping to look at it, and it's causing traffic jams. Oh, you know, because well, it's pretty cool looking. Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting stuff. Thank you for having me Love back. You. Cover to Cover is my podcast. Come over and give that a listen for Absolutely. fun as well. Absolutely. Love you, Chris. Come to Milwaukee. I, and it's going to be, you know, you get the worst thing fear you have as a comedian is seeing the um, discount ticket link go up when you're going somewhere. Yeah. And I just saw it go up in Milwaukee. I'm like, Well, oh, that's great. No. For the Milwaukee people, get a deal. Get a deal. Pick up get, a deal. Yeah, Things are expensive. You can go me. have some fun. Yeah, you can get and I mean, probably discount. go apple picking. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like it's a cute yes. time to go to Milwaukee. Oh, I love Milwaukee. Yeah. I had a great time last time there. Sunday night, one show. Erica Jane's tickets were going for $2. Oh, no. So it yeah. does not Everybody. Oh, no, It doesn't matter. It's tough. Listen. We want people in the Some city. You can pick up quick. a great deal. Pick up a great deal. I'm performing at a gift shop in, uh, this is real, Saturday night. This Saturday. Where? In uh, like Champaign, Illinois. It's called Mahame, Illinois. It's a gift shop. Sold out. Sold out. <laughs> How many seats are there? <laughs> Who knows? It's like probably 12. It's a gift shop. I think I'm just performing next to like pencils. You know, whatever. You just do what you got to do. I think you just do it to keep yourself humble. I no do. One... I mean, you know, I don't know. You know, people say, oh, she's changed. You know, Heather McDonald's mm -hmm. changed. Right. The same. And at my son's school, this girl who was in my school, my high school. Yeah. She came and sat next to me and she was a juicy scooper. And she said, you know, I love listening to you and you are just exactly the same as you were in high school. Right. So I'm like, thank you. Uh -huh. I think it's so weird that people that listen to this show then tell me that in the last eight years I've changed so much. But then how is it that someone that knew me in 1988 right. says, no, yeah, this is exactly how you spoke. This is the way exactly. And the literally and is, nothing has changed. As a, guy like, who, as a guy who knows you, I mean, you can't help but be humbled in this business. Yeah. You, you get humbled. So no matter even if you try to be an asshole and cocky and whatever, you get humbled over and over again, no matter who you are, yeah, you know, in thousands of ways, just like oh, here we we see it every day. When I know. I, ha I it's like you know, I I went to my my country club, which I deserve to go to a country club. So right. shut up. 
and and I like it. And they had like a, a wine night or whatever. And so I'm like, gosh, you know, I'm home this weekend. I'm not performing. I'm going to go. So I go and it started at five. Right. Well, by seven, it was like over. But they had a band playing. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, let's go over to where the band is. And Peter didn't go because he was like tired or whatever. He didn't go. So I was there. And now I'm smart enough to not post my stories when I'm buzzed. Though people like... Spencer's wife, Heidi, they want people are sad they're not seeing it. Uh -huh. But I'm a little scarred from people hating my guts. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I I was like, you know, but they were so good. They were playing this music and everything. And I was showing it. But I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just not post it right now. I'm gonna watch in the morning. So yeah, finally learn. That's learned, a good idea. Finally. Yeah. I watch it in the morning. And I'm like, everybody else was posting like them at pink. Like with her oh. and Alanis Morissette, like so cool. And then you see mine, if I was to have posted it, everyone has like Some... white hair. It's practically empty. Oh my God. And I'm like, funny. wow. Yeah. Well, good for you. Maybe I will just post you should, it. This you just got to wait. And yeah, I think the waiting till the morning is great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I go back to like my hotel room when I'm on the road and, you know, do these. Jen Cook used to call him Dear America. Like, and I, just, I think it's important at the time. Dear America, let yeah. me tell you. And then I'm like, oh, what was it? so embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yes, very good. All right. Yeah. Love you. Bye -bye. dot fun. That's it. And go check out me, Heather McDonald, at heathermcdonald.net. Perfect. Thank you.